astronomy is very much a data-driven science. Again, I admittedly am an observer, so I have a slightly biased viewpoint in this regard, but I think a lot of the step changes come when there are new advances in our detection. The most obvious one here is when Galileo first used a telescope for astronomical observations. Now, his observations of you know, the sun's rotation, the phases of Venus, the moons around Jupiter, the mountains and the craters and the structures on the moon, these were the first proof that revolutionised some of the theories about the structure of our solar system. And so it's when these new facilities come available, new observations are made, that they then the theory follows and they challenge the theory to match up to it or they challenge the predictions from the theory. Right from the first telescope, that's still true today. This is one of the reasons why astronomers are always pushing for the next big telescope or the next big space telescope. Bigger, better telescopes, whether it's the 8 and 10 metre class telescopes that we have in ground-based astronomy today, with their detectors and their instruments and looking ever ahead to where we have um, going to have telescopes that have got 39-metre mirrors across. We're always pushing for those new facilities because they're the things that are going to change our view. We're going to detect new things. And it's not just the size of the telescope and its power. It's the nature of the detector you put on it. And it's also the ways you have of sifting through the data to pluck out the relevant information. All of this is as important as just pointing your telescope in the right place at the right time. The new facilities drive the data that we get. And it's not just the new facilities. Obviously, if you get a new telescope, it enables you to see new things. Never is this more true than when you open up new windows of observation in different wave bands. For many years, excuse me, for many years, we were restricted to visible astronomy using just the usual optical part of the wave band. In the 1940s, radio astronomy opened up and we discovered completely new things about the galaxies that we'd hitherto thought were just, you know, stars and gas. In the 1980s, you start getting infrared astronomy where we start to see the very cool regions of the universe. During the 1960s and 70s, we get X-ray astronomy where we see the most explosive, the hottest, the most energetic regions of the universe. And every time you open up one of these new wave bands for the observations, you discover a whole tranche of places that you didn't realise were exciting and phenomena that you didn't realise were so exciting within the universe. Now, we've effectively opened up the full range of the electromagnetic spectrum. There are no new windows left to discover, though, of course, we can go deeper and we can see, discover new objects or new facets about the objects we've discovered within those windows. But we're not likely to be discovering new processes as such. So having explored the full range of light out there, the next big step, as I talked about again just a few lectures ago with the transient universe, is about time domain astronomy. This is where watching not just the light that things give out, but how this changes from one day, one week, one year to the next. And this is where there are going to be the big advances. Right now, the ESA Gaia satellite is more or less taking a five-year movie of the sky, looking for those changes that maybe indicate a supernova going off or a nova or stars at the end of their lives or things flickering or bursting, changes in quasars very far away looking for those minute changes that happen that normally we would miss. The next big step would be the LSST. Again, huge new advance coming online within the next decade where you're scanning the sky every few days looking for changes that are happening. These are the things that are going to revolutionise our view of astronomy in terms of the data collection. It means that you don't just happen to be lucky to be looking at the right place at the right time to see something exciting happen.